Hello, I'm Joshua Lohman, and welcome to this episode of Alaska Filmmakers, a program dedicated to exploring the many talented individuals working in the Alaska film industry. In 2008, the Alaska Film Production Incentive Program was passed, re-establishing the Alaska Film Office. In the last few years, Alaska has seen a surge in productions coming into the state as a result of the incentive and the advantages it provides. In order to explore some of the benefits provided by the incentive program, we're joined today by the head of the Alaska Film Office. Alaska Filmmakers is pleased to welcome Dave Orell. Dave? Josh, thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks so much. Um, why don't we go ahead and start by telling me a little bit about what you do with the state. Sure. Uh, I uh, manage the Alaska Film Office. Uh, primarily, my job is to encourage filmmakers to make movies in Alaska. And the tool I have to do that with is the Alaska Film Production Incentive Program. Um, what kind of brought you into that? You have a little bit of a background in, uh, in film and television? I do, actually. Uh, I arrived in Alaska in 1981 with $137 in a backpack, straight out of high school. Uh, and one of the early jobs I had was a production assistant over at Channel 7 right here. And I worked that job and uh, advanced to a technical director over there and a videographer. Worked at a variety of stations around town. So I really kind of had that background. Went back to school and uh, studied communications and uh, have been off and running ever since. Straight out of high school. So where, where were you from originally? I grew up in Colorado. Uh, I actually started in high school, in a high school program uh, that made a television show. I was the weather caster. Dreadful at it, but uh, it was a good experience. And it got me interested in the industry. And I think that's what I really see is happening right now here in Alaska. We have a lot of people that have a little bit of experience and are gaining interest in the industry, and we really are on the threshold of being able to do a lot more. And was it, the, uh, was it that experience that got you the job with the state, or were you with the state already? Well, I have actually worked for the state in a number of communications uh, positions. I actually was worth with the Department of Public Health for a number of years, uh, and then I left that position uh, and went to the Alaska Travel Industry Association, where I did communications, government relations work for them. While the uh, legislation was being considered, uh, I kind of kept an eye on it. I was working for the Travel Industry Association. I actually met with Senator Ellis, who was the prime sponsor of the bill, and he happened to mention it to me. Uh, we were talking about the travel industry's uh, legislative priorities, and he happened to mention that uh, he was working on a film bill to me. And that really kind of attracted my interest, because I remembered the old days in the 80s when the Alaska had a film office under Mary Pinelbury. And uh, I really saw it as a great opportunity for Alaska to step back into the game and really become uh, active in the film industry again. You know, up until the mid-90s, Alaska had an active film office. We saw some films come into Alaska. We saw some productions get shot here. We saw Runaway Train uh, on Deadly Ground. Uh, and then when the film office was essentially defunded by the legislature, a lot of that activity went away. And so we saw a lot of films that were set in Alaska filmed elsewhere, primarily British Columbia, uh, Washington State, a lot of the northern tier states. The legislature recognized that. And uh, I think the, the last straw was uh, the recent film, uh, The Proposal, with mm. Sandra Bullock, set in Sitka, Alaska, filmed in Massachusetts. And uh, fortunately, being set in Sitka, Alaska, uh, the uh, the chair of the uh, Senate Finance Committee was Bert Stedman from Sitka, and I think he, that was the last straw. It was time for Alaska to get back into the game. So the, the legislation had broad bipartisan support in both the House and Senate. It passed uh, overwhelmingly. It was signed into law in 2008, uh, and the administration is very supportive of it. How was the incentive created? What was kind of the process on bringing that about through the legislature? Well, I actually wasn't involved in that process, so this is kind of second-hand information. Uh, the Alaska Film Group, which is a trade association that has been around for a number of years, uh, really worked very closely with Senator Ellis to get the legislation sponsored. And it, it took them a number of years to really kind of develop the, the, the right package. Uh, but I think, you know, it, it was a case of, of timing. Uh, there was uh, obviously a lot of production going on uh, that had Alaska sets, uh, that was set in Alaska, that wasn't being filmed here. I think, you know, as Alaskans, we want to see, if Alaska's in your story, we want to see it filmed here. 
Uh, and so I think that the timing was good there. Uh, in that you know, decade, decade and a half that Alaska didn't have an active film office, the industry really changed dramatically. Uh, you know, it got smaller, lighter, faster, more mobile. Uh, and then most jurisdictions created some sort of incentive program. I think in a lot of ways it started in Canada uh, with the Canadian uh, National Film Production Incentive and then the provinces got involved. You know, 20 years ago nobody had ever heard of Vancouver, Canada and now it's Hollywood North. Uh, and a lot of that was due to an incentive program. So that when Alaska was looking at recreating the film office, we realized it wasn't going to be enough just to have a film office, just to have somebody answering the phone calls and talking to filmmakers. There had to be an incentive program. And so in some respects, we were late to the game. We, you know, most of the other jurisdictions had already created incentive programs. But that gave Alaska a chance to kind of look at all of the options that were out there and really kind of pick the best uh, models to follow. And so our incentive program, I think, was really designed uh, to be good for filmmakers, uh, but also to be good for Alaska, to really help, once again, develop that industry and develop the infrastructure necessary. And what exactly is a tax incentive? I mean, does that mean on there? That's one thing that I've kind of, I keep coming, wondering what that means exactly. I mean, they're, they're not getting a check. They're getting some sort of. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is a little convoluted. It is very common in the industry. Most uh, jurisdictions do have some sort of tax incentive. But the way it works is this. Uh, once the production has completed their shooting, uh, they submit an application with uh, an audited budget that says we spent this amount in the state. We look at that, uh, we say, okay, you spent this amount, uh, you spent you know, $300,000, so you're eligible for roughly $100,000 in tax credit. It is a transferable tax credit that can be used on Alaska corporate income taxes. Well, most filmmakers are not going to owe any Alaska corporate income tax. That's where the transferable comes in. The filmmaker needs to find a business, usually an Alaska business, that has an Alaska tax liability. They sell that tax credit to that Alaska business. That Alaska business uses it on their tax return. So it's kind of a win-win situation. The filmmaker gets cash from selling uh, that tax credit. The business buys that tax credit at a slight discount. So if it's a $100,000 tax credit, the business might buy that for, say, $85,000. So they're saving money on their taxes. The filmmaker's getting $85,000 to recoup the expenses uh, on that production. Wow, so just for facilitating that, that business it can save, in the, your scenario, $15,000 just, just exactly. by facilitating that transfer. Exactly. Wow, that's great. Yeah, they, they save money on their taxes, and that's really good for Alaska businesses. Obviously, everybody wants to save money on their taxes, but it also provides that uh, interest for that business to really look at the film industry and see how they can benefit uh, from that industry, not only from the tax credit, but oh, well, maybe I can provide services uh, to that industry. I can provide hotel rooms. Hoteliers are a great source of uh, people who would be interested in buying those tax credits. So a number of different uh, linkages can form. And is that something where the, the state is kind of like providing that linkage, or are they kind of having to go out and, and find businesses to, to do it's that? It's a little bit of both. Uh, unfortunately, you know, as a state agency, mm -hmm. we cannot act as brokers. So essentially what I do is do my outreach. I go to the Rotary Club, to the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the various sundry organizations, talk about the tax credit, get businesses to sign up for that. And then when the film office approves a tax credit, we can say, these are the businesses who have expressed an interest in buying tax credits. It's not exclusive. There are certainly lots of other businesses. You know, particularly, I suggest to every production, Talk to the people that you work with. If you're renting equipment from a company, talk to them. Maybe they have a tax liability. So start there. Start with the people you know. You'll probably get a higher rate. Uh, but if not, here's a list of companies that have expressed an interest. Uh, so far, we've uh, approved tax credits for 15 different productions. And uh, while I can't be sure of it, uh, rumor mill says that most of those have already been transferred. What kind of, uh, because you were working with the travel industry, um, 
do you see a lot of crossover in the objectives of those two in bringing people from outside in, or do you see it as a more distinct commercial side, uh, bringing more just distinct industry in rather than bringing the people in? Well, I, I see a number of things happening. Uh, you know, obviously, when uh, a state or jurisdiction appears in a film, it drives interest in that. Uh, New Zealand saw a huge influx of tourism after The Lord of the Rings. You know, New Zealand was never mentioned in The Lord of the Rings, but people knew where it was shot and wanted to see those places. I think that's kind of in the background of one thing that, that jurisdictions find. When a film is made in that jurisdiction, people are interested in it and they want to come see it. So that's part of it. But really, I am in the Department of Commerce, Division mm -hmm. of Economic Development, uh, and that's really what this is all about. Uh, this incentive program is designed for economic development, to help build an industry in Alaska, to help diversify our economy. Uh, you know, the administration really feels the creative arts, uh, all of the creative arts, uh, form an industry cluster that can be very, very good for Alaska. It brings in creative people, people that uh, uh, Alaska wants to have, and it can provide good jobs. Uh, so that's part of it. So that, that's the economic development end of things. And then, you know, obviously I am interested in bringing Hollywood productions to Alaska. They bring in money, they uh, fill hotel rooms, they rent cars, they rent equipment. That's good for the Alaska economy. But more importantly, from my personal perspective, it really builds infrastructure that then Alaska storytellers will have available to tell their own stories. And that's what's really exciting. When we can build an industry so that Alaskans can tell Alaskan stories in Alaska, to a worldwide audience, that's exciting. Yeah, it really is. One of the questions that brings up about the incentive is what, uh, how does that incentive benefit the locals outside of that those people are showing up? Is there something built in for local businesses? Sure, absolutely. Uh, basically, to get the incentive, the, the incentive provides a base rate of 30% on expenses that are made in Alaska. For it to qualify, they essentially have to use an Alaska business. So any equipment rentals, those kind of things, obviously help uh, Alaska businesses. The hotel rooms, the car rentals, uh, all of the equipment rental, whether it be a scissor lift uh, or a camera rental, if it's from an Alaska company, it can qualify. Another part of it is there is an additional 10% incentive for Alaska wages. So if they hire Alaskans, the Alaskan wages go up to 40%. Oh. And then there's an additional uh, uh, percentages, 2% for shooting in the off season, basically October through March in the winter. And there's an additional incentive for shooting in rural areas. Uh, a lot of those uh, are really going to be taken advantage of, particularly the rural incentive, uh, seldom by feature films, more oh. for documentaries, nonfiction television, uh, those kind of productions. What are we doing, kind of your film office, what is that doing to bring up productions? What are you doing to kind of get sure. the word out for what Alaska offers? Sure. Uh, you know, we have a very, very limited budget uh, for marketing. Uh, and really, we're trying to right-size our marketing efforts. You know, we have an infant industry here in Alaska. And we don't want to over-promise. We want to make sure that when filmmakers come to Alaska, they have a good experience. They find crews that are appropriate for their size. So really, we're not out there putting up billboards and ads and all the trades. Uh, we're very selective. We're very targeted. Uh, we do a little bit of print advertising in some of the, the industry trade magazines. But mostly, we uh, really rely on personal contact. We go to the American Film Market in Santa Monica. We go to the uh, Location Trade Show which is sponsored by the Association of Film Commissioners International. So we really kind of target uh, the folks we want to talk to. While it's great, we want to see some big, uh, big budget, major motion pictures from the studios come to Alaska. You know, that's kind of like bagging the elephant. You're only going to do that once every few years. And what we're really trying to do is get independent filmmakers with smaller budget films to really fill in the gaps between those major studio motion pictures. And once again, we hope that uh, Alaskan filmmakers can take advantage of the infrastructure that these larger productions are creating for us. How does the Alaska incentive compare to other regions, uh, both in the states and outside like Canada? Well, you know, uh, we have a 
absolute rate of up to 44 percent. Mm -hmm. That is about the highest in the country. However, I do encourage filmmakers to look at the reality, the base rate of 30 percent with the add-ons. Mm -hmm. So at 30 percent, we're right in the middle of the pack. Uh, Michigan has a, a 42 percent, but similar to ours, it has add-ons, and the base rate, I think, is in that, in that 30 percent rate. Uh, Louisiana has one. Uh, I think that what we will see, a lot of states are having significant budget troubles. And so uh, some states are looking at uh, kind of reining in uh, their incentive programs, which then puts Alaska once again in a better, more competitive place <laughs> with our incentive. But yeah, I'd say our 30% is pretty much in the middle of the pack. Uh, it's competitive. It makes uh, filmmakers look at Alaska seriously. Uh, when they can see that uh, there are Alaskan crew folks that they can hire uh, to bump the, that portion of their uh, budget up to 40%, uh, that's real exciting. And I think you know we are seeing a lot of productions seriously consider Alaska simply because of that production incentive. Um, that brings up a great point of our crew and things like that. Is the state doing anything else to kind of help boost that, the film office in itself kind of Yeah, doing the film something? office, you know, once again, we are we an office of one. Uh, so, you know, I don't have a lot of tools at, at my disposal to, uh, to work on that workforce development issue. However, uh, we are working with the Department of Labor uh, and trying to uh, develop some opportunities for apprenticeships uh, within the industry. Uh, the Department of Labor is very supportive of that if there's industry-driven interest. Uh, so I think that's coming. We have talked with the University, Maya, up in Fairbanks. Uh, we're talking to the folks here in Anchorage in the Communications Department. Uh, Paula Banchero, uh, the chair of the, the Communications and Journalism Department, is very interested. I think uh, one of the, the things that I think we need to look at is kind of a, a multidisciplinary approach uh, in the university system where you know theater and communications may come together to provide some of the, the skill sets necessary. Uh, so you know it, it's once again very much in, it, in its infancy. Uh, I see great things, I see good opportunities. But you know there has to be work for people. You know I spent a good decade working in television, and finally had to step outside to make a living. Uh, and now I work for the for the state. Uh, and I think we've found a lot of folks that have either had to leave the state to maintain their career and their career interest in this industry. And so hopefully we'll bring some of those folks back, uh, and we'll create actual opportunities so people can make a living in this industry. And that's what's so important. Um, where would you like to see it go, like with your position? What would you like to see happening in the next two years, say? That's a really good question. Uh, you know, I, I, I see room for incremental growth. Uh, I think that, you know, once again, kind of similar to our marketing program where we're trying to right size, we're not trying to over promise. I think that, you know, as we can grow the industry, as we can grow the workforce, as we can grow the physical infrastructure. You know, Alaska, we don't have a uh, purpose-built soundstage at this point. Uh, so we need to build some of that infrastructure. And so really, I, I think it's, it's incremental growth uh, and, and growing in a way that doesn't over-promise and over-produce. We really want to have a situation where it's sustainable for the long haul. And I think part of that, once again, let's, let's you know, shoot for the elephant when we can. Let's, let, let's get Everybody Loves Whales to come to Alaska. Uh, but let's also get smaller productions like Ghost Visions uh, that recently shot. Uh, and then let's also encourage local Alaskan filmmakers to bring their projects. You know, I've had a few folks say, well, can my Alaskan project qualify for the incentive? Absolutely. We encourage Alaskan projects to apply for the incentive. You know, with a minimum spend of $100,000 to participate in that incentive program, uh, just about any production, uh, feature film production, can qualify. Most recently, uh, Andrew McLean shot uh, On the Ice up in Barrow. Mm -hmm. They did apply for the tax credit and were given a tax credit, and he's showing in Sundance. So that's really exciting when we can see an Alaska film shot in Alaska in Barrow uh, really participating on the national stage of Sundance. Once those productions have done, what do they do to apply for it? Well, essentially, the, it's a, it's a two-stage process. We do require productions to pre-qualify, 
during pre-production in the, the development process. They need to supply us with their estimated budget, uh, a script or treatment for the project, uh, a little bit of paperwork, and a distribution plan. We need to know somebody's going to see what they're making. Uh, so that pre-qualification is relatively simple and straightforward. So we, we do require that in development pre-production. Uh, then once the program, uh, program or production or feature film shoots, uh, they can wrap their Alaska portion, and then they need to hire an Alaska licensed CPA to uh, essentially verify all the expenses that they're going to claim under the program. They need to provide some paperwork. They need to provide the film office with at least a rough cut of the production so that what they told us they were going to make us make in pre-production is what they actually made. Once all that comes into the film office, we review that. Uh, and typically, we will review that and turn around uh, an approved application within about two weeks. Uh, at that point, we send a memo to the Department of Revenue, and the Department of Revenue actually issues the tax credit and deals with the transfer of the tax credit to that Alaska business. And they have said they will do that within 30 days. So uh, once a filmmaker completes the production, they could have a tax credit in six weeks, usually quite a bit less. Uh, and so that can really help uh, those uh, wrapping up expenses uh, for any production. I know the state has a website that can list um, cast and crew. How would local Alaskans get listed on that? Absolutely. It's, it's a pretty straightforward process. Just go to film.alaska.gov, uh, click on the crew and service providers link, uh, and then that will take you to a page that links you to uh, our, our database service provider. The listing pr process is really quite easy as far as you know, online uh, listing services go. There's no charge for it. Probably the big key that I have to remind people about, there's actually three databases. There's one for crew members, which is for individuals. There's one for service providers, which is more for businesses. Uh, and then there's a talent. So you need to make sure you're selecting the right database. But if you have any questions, mm -hmm. contact the film office, uh, film.alaska.gov, click on the contact page, and uh, you can give me a call. Thanks so much, Dave. Is there anything else you'd like our audience to know before we finish up today? Well, absolutely. I, I think particularly filmmakers and Alaska businesses, all the information you need on our program is available at film.alaska.gov. We tried to find a URL that's easy to remember and easy to find. It's got all the information on the incentive program for filmmakers. There's a whole section on there for Alaska businesses, how they can take advantage of the, uh, the incentive program. And we also provide uh, listings, uh, online listing service for crew, service providers, and talent. And those listings are no charge, so absolutely I would encourage everyone to check out film.alaska.gov. Well, that's all we have time for for this episode of Alaska Filmmakers. We'd like to thank our host, Out North, and Dave Worrell for taking the time to speak with us today. Once again, everyone has a story to tell.